Okay, starting in three, two, one. Three things in today's speech. First of all, knocking out CEO. Second of all, OO. Lastly, coming back to our case and taking a way off between the gov bench and the off bench and explain why uh, yeah, CG should win. First of all, then CEO. I think CEO mainly says four things coming from their member. The first thing they clarify is that like their own counterfactual of like grassroots and how that's somehow supposed to be a lot better than our policy. Mm -hmm. I would note that A, obviously, I think to some extent, like, like yeah, I think to some extent, like grassroots are not exclusive, but then they preempt by saying that like, ah, there's limited amount of attention. You can't really do grassroots and this policy at once. I would note to you that I think even if it's a case that there is limited amounts of attention, like Carity pointed out, I think they're all looking towards the same goal and the same like the same goal, which is that like women should be able to be like out and working. So I think to some extent the thing that you're looking for, the like the attention is going to be on the same idea. It's not like they're fighting for two different ideas. So I think to some extent the attention is still going to be like diver, uh, still still going to be around the same idea. It's just that like two different two different actors within the feminist movement are portraying it. And I think to some extent that doesn't really change the feminist movement that much. But second of all, I think if I think I would question the feasibility of grassroots to some extent because if grassroots existed all this time, I think to like then to some extent they should have solved at least all, all, all of the problems within status quo. But as character already Carity already characterized to you, as of right now the feminist movement is already facing a lot of backlash from like other radicals and or, or for for quote unquote being too radical, right? So I think to some extent if grassroots have been all here all that time but they haven't really done anything, then I think they have to prove why grassroots are more likely to be able to do better this time around. But third of all, I think it's kind of weird that they talk about how we're able to use capital better when grassroots don't really need that much capital since it's about like women voicing out as opposed to actual money. So I think what happens on their side of the house is you just have this bunch of like feminism, like feminist movement capitalism fl floating around that they don't actually use. The second thing that CEO says is to clarify what our, our counterfactual is, which is like women going out into the workplace and then they say that it's bad because like they're, uh, uh, to some, they say that that's not solved because they say that there's still stigma within the workplace and somehow you don't solve that. First thing is that uh, given characters extension, you we already tell you that you limit that because you change the way people think about the feminist movement, you're probably going to get more people to be pro-feminist or at least get less of the radicals to, to think that the feminist movement's less radical because like obviously you you divert the feminist movement's goals to be something that's agreeable coming from both sides. But B, I think at least at least they're they're out there like working as compared to being at home and just like sitting there taking care of the baby. I think it's much better that they're able to be independent and actually making some money. I think that's a comparative. The thing that CEO says then is that like this policy is somehow hard to get through, therefore we should use grassroots. A feminism is not a political movement so like it doesn't really necessarily need like the government, right? It's uh, the government to like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, right? It's, it needs like people and women to be voicing out as a lot. Like this advocacy is not necessarily based on a policy. It's that it needs people to support this in order for it to work. But second of all, like we said, we're able to change ideas anyway. So it's like regardless of the, whether the policy is made or not, it changes ideas because like it looks better if the feminist movement is supporting something that both sides can agree on. It doesn't even really matter if the policy goes through or not. The fourth thing that CEO says is their extension about how you get more backlash because feminists and uh, feminism or like the women as a whole, they look like they're not taking care of their family or they're just out working. A, I think, I'm not sure as to why you're going to lose followers necessarily from the feminist movement because that's precisely what the feminist movement stands for, right? They don't want women to be sitting at home caring after a crying baby. They want women to be like outside being independent and being like that, like, like that that lady instead of just sitting at home. So I think to some extent you you're only going to lose followers because that's what women stand for. B, at least they're getting money. I think that it looks I think it looks a lot better because women because now women are out actually like making money for their family. Like I think to some extent the size is going to be like ah oh, yeah you're making money. Like that looks better than staying at home and like washing the dishes because I think to some extent people don't value washing dishes as opposed to actually making money for your family. But third of all, as we said, we're also able is in our extension we also prove that we're able to change people's minds in terms of like radicals and how the feminist movement is portrayed. So I think that also outweighs this argument. Before I move on to Orla, I'll take a few eyes. Perfect. Why wouldn't it exist on either side? Like, you, you just said that making money is something perceived to be a good thing. Why wouldn't it be that is true? Why wouldn't just like, men like, like, let's their women like, let their wives have like, 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 because they need somebody to be at home taking care of the baby. That's a problem with the status quo because like what, there's nobody to take care of the baby, therefore the men are like, ah, you should take home with her, take care of the baby because there's no one to do so. But if it's a case that now you have a caretaker or at least somebody to fill in that role, then obviously women, women are just going to be walking around like not doing anything that looks lazy. So I think they're probably going to take up a job and obviously it looks good if you take a job. Okay, OO then. OO basically says two things. A, there's like this trade-off about capital thing. Uh, aside from Carity's responses and rebuttals, I think we're willing to take this trade-off because of two reasons. A, I think we're willing to take this trade off, like the comparative coming from their side is far worse because I can't ask my to explain to you. I think existing feminism within the status quo is already facing a lot of backlash from like radical conservatives who shame them for being like too radical and putting like 
female people uh, among like uh, above male people. So I think to some extent like existing feminism isn't really working, and I, I think I don't think they've actually proven any access to why existing feminism is going to work. But the comparative is coming from our side, we change people not because of like subtleness, like OG says, or because of empathy for women necessarily, but it creates a common ground, a common goal between the conservatives, or between the radicals, and the feminist movement because they're all fighting for one thing, which is helping the weak, helping the elderly, helping the people who like don't have anyone to care for them. But secondly, I think we're also willing to take this trade off because they want to characterize this as like a trade off between like helping helping women or helping society, but it's not really because as we told you in our extension, this resource being this resource is being spread in, within this policy actually helps women, as we said, because it, it makes the feminist movement like seem less radical, etc. So I don't think this is necessarily a trade off between like society and women, right? It's a it's it's it, it, it's an our point is that you're basically able to help society as well as feminism as a whole, and that's our argument. But the second thing that um second thing that OO says is basically that there's going to be backlash because like you're taking away people's free will and they don't really have like time. A, I would have to you that sure, a lot of people, sorry, I already took one. People might be reluctant to like do community service or a, a bunch of things, but I think in the end, if you have to do it like all the time, I think to some extent you won't be like rebelling against the government every single time because like, for example, if, if, if you don't like debate class, but you're forced to take it every week, I think you'll stop whining like around three weeks, right? I just don't think this argument really makes sense. But lastly, I think C I think I think the way in coming from C C CG is to say that women taking up, uh, the, the notion of women taking up jobs, you have this care system that is benefiting everyone. I think it looks far better when you have this care system that has creates a common goal between like conservatives and like the uh, feminist movement. I think this looks far better and we're able to sort of like fight uh, fight like the enemy or like the, the these like values within society and we're able to change minds. I think that's why CG wins. Thank you.